Thank you very much. Good evening. Uh, that was uh, very exhilarating, um, James. And uh, um, we, it turns out we have a little more in common than you might imagine. I'm a SAF London boy, too. I come from, I come from Streatham. And uh, like me and Naomi Campbell, we're uh, Streatham's favourite son and daughter, we've decided. Uh, also, like you, I'm um, impassioned by language. Clearly, you're uh, a language-possessed uh, man. You're, 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 you're out of your brain on language, really, aren't you? And uh, that, was, that was true for me, too. So uh, that's just as well, because that's the heart of William Shakespeare. Um, uh, of course, I'm very grateful to William Shakespeare, professionally speaking. Um, <laughs> Once upon a time, a very, very long time ago now, about 35 years ago, I was playing Orlando in As You Like It at the National Theatre. And uh, I'd finished the show and I uh, got up onto Waterloo Bridge and I, I took a cab. And the cab driver said to me, uh, he said, uh, you work there, do you? And I said, uh, yeah, I do. And he said, well, what, what were you doing? He said, were you doing Shakespeare? And I said, yes. He said, they do a lot of Shakespeare there, don't they? I said, yes. He said, a, a Royal Shakespeare Company, they do a lot of Shakespeare too. And I said, yes, they, it's true, they do. He said, uh, he said, at the Royal Court Theatre at the moment, they're doing Hamlet, aren't they? And I said, that is true. And he said, uh, and, uh, uh, he said in uh, Stratford Theatre, Royal Stratford East, he said, they're doing Hamlet there, aren't they? No. I said, yes, 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 they are. And at the Old Witch, they've got a Shakespeare season going. Aren't they? He said, tell me, what would have happened if Shakespeare had never lived? <laughs> So I embarked on a rather long and probably tedious uh, 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 little disquisition about how Shakespeare uh, uh, would undoubtedly, uh, had Shakespeare not lived because of the, the moment in the evolution of the English language and the moment in the evolution of the English theatre, somebody like Shakespeare would have come along. And so I went on at some, some great length. And uh, he listened politely. And then he said, after a pause, I reckon Bacon wrote them. He, he believed that Francis Bacon, the, the Elizabethan statesman, wrote the plays of William Shakespeare. Um, uh, well, William Shakespeare didn't. Uh, uh, Francis Bacon didn't, I have to tell you. Um, I belong to a, a rather radical fundamentalist group which holds the extremely dangerous view that the plays of William Shakespeare were written by William Shakespeare. <laughs> Because no, no, none of the many, many candidates, and every day brings a new candidate for the authorship of Shakespeare's plays, uh, but none of these candidates were what William Shakespeare, the man from Stratford-on-Avon, uh, was, which is an absolute practical man of the theatre. He knew the theatre absolutely inside out, and had it not been for that, his plays would not be played today. No one who didn't have a profound inner knowledge of the way the theatre works, the way that character works in the theatre, the way that plays are structured, the way in which language works in the theatre, uh, there could not possibly have written those plays. But of course, the most important single thing that William Shakespeare did was to give the most complete account of what it is to be human known to me by any writer in the whole range of world literature insofar as I know it, and I think that must be true, because the plays of William Shakespeare are done everywhere, in every country in the world, and they mean something very particular and precise to all of those people. In those plays, everybody sees themselves. All human life is in Shakespeare. This is a miracle. And it's an incredibly lucky thing for us, um, us English actors, us British actors, us English-speaking actors. Uh, and I, I did a play about Shakespeare called uh, the, the, uh, Being Shakespeare at the, uh, the theater, the Civic Theatre in Trieste. Uh, uh, and I was absolutely astounded. I thought this was some kind of nice cultural exchange which paid respect to the idea that Italian culture and English culture can connect in some sort of way. To my amazement, this 1,800-seat theatre was sold out for every single night of the run. This is a one-man play in English, performed in front of 1,800 <laughs> Italians for five consecutive performances. And at the end of the performances, which went astonishingly well, uh, 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 the, many of the audience came to me and said, this is I've waited for this all my life. I've never heard Shakespeare spoken in 
uh, English and uh, I know th th these plays absolutely by heart. And then afterwards, uh, um, Italian actors would come to me and say, we hate you <laughs> because you speak the language of Shakespeare natively. It's your native tongue. And we have to play it in translation. And we have to play all the plays that we do in translation. We have three dramatists, just three great Italian dramatists. And you have so many great uh, uh, English dramatists, but above all, you have the man, Shakespeare. And uh, it's an astonishing phenomenon uh, uh, that this could possibly be true, and it's, a, it's an improbable conjunction of events. I think what I said to the cab driver was true. It, it, it was a moment in the ev evolution of the English language of extraordinary freedom, uh, where Shakespeare could almost, as James did tonight, riff constantly on the language, inventing it, reinventing it, uh, 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 um, uh, playing with it, wonderful jests, exploring how much you can actually express with language. And this man, had he not been a playwright, would have been unquestionably the greatest poet in the English language. The music of his verse is in itself a miracle. Uh, and then his sense of character, overwhelming. Of course, we, 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 we now define ourselves in terms of the characters that William Shakespeare created. A, a, a tyrant is a Richard III, a lover is a Romeo or a Juliet. We're always connecting up to this extraordinary thing. And uh, the most important thing about uh, William Shakespeare, though, the most important thing any of us can do with William Shakespeare, uh, and, and, and I think uh, Shakespeare is uh, um, a profoundly life-enhancing phenomenon, both for actors and for audiences, just connecting with him. But the most important thing you can ever do with Shakespeare is to read him out loud. The moment you read him out loud, he enters into your blood system. He enters into your veins. He enters into your muscles. And there was an old uh, a technique now long discredited and shamed uh, where people learned poems. They just learned them. Some people that I know, old, old people, used to learn a poem every day. And uh, uh, to learn a poem of William Shakespeare, this is the unbelievable luck that I and my fellow actors have, to let a poem or a speech of Shakespeare's pass through your system is an incredibly empowering and thrilling and transforming experience. And I know a little bit more about that because I did a program a while ago, a rather um, catastrophic program on the whole, called <laughs> Jamie's Dream School, which was an experiment by the chef Jamie Oliver who believed that um, uh, an awful lot of kids leave school without any qualifications at all. And he didn't either himself. That, that's why he is concerned about it. And very sweetly, and I think out of the best motives, he came to the conclusion that the reason that uh, 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 these kids had left school without uh, uh, qualifications was because they had not met teachers of genius. And so his idea was to assemble a group of teachers of genius and uh, uh, unleash them on uh, a group of 30 or 40 uh, kids, mostly with attention deficit disorder, all in one room together. <laughs> we realized after all, I was one of the teachers of genius, uh, along with David Starkey and, and, and um, <coughs> Rolf Harris, unfortunately. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, um, we realized very quickly that the big problem was that uh, uh, what was really interesting them was uh, not uh, at all uh, uh, what we were talking about, but how, how they could use us in their peer group games together. And uh, we were all patsies for that. We, 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 we struggled desperately to try to communicate. And then it was very good because we all had to start to think again about what we were trying to do and the way we were trying to communicate with these kids. And uh, I had started, I had believed that it would be easy to interest them in the life of William Shakespeare, in the Elizabethan world out of which he came, uh, in the history of the theater, not at all. No interest whatever, none, none, none. Just black, blanked me out completely, went to their computers, went on iPhone and so on. So then, I, I, I was either going to give up, and some of us nearly did give up, um, 
or I, I had to find a new way. And then I thought, well, the obvious thing is a practical thing. I must get them actually acting this stuff, which they purport to know nothing about and to care nothing about. So I took them down to the Globe Theater, which they knew nothing about and had never been to at all. So I took them round the back way so that they came in through what is called the tiring house in an Elizabethan playhouse where the, where the actors put on their clothes and sorted themselves out before they went on stage. And uh, I, I opened the doors and they found themselves on the stage of that wonderful Globe Theatre. And every single one of them, the most uh, curmudgeonly, the most difficult, the most intransigent of them all, just went, wow, and suddenly screw. And at that moment, brilliant strategist that I am, I thrust. <laughs> pieces of paper into their hands, and it was the opening scene of Romeo and Juliet where the boys are, are, are teasing each other and taunting each other and uh, uh, you pluck your thumb at me and all that stuff. And I gave it to these boys, and they were taken aback, but they just did it, and they absolutely got it in one. And they were transformed, and the cameramen, you know, who are very cynical old sods, said, what happened? What happened? And the answer was, William Shakespeare happened. They got it. They got the language in their mouths. And they got the passion of it all. And then I started directing them. I directed them just as I would direct professional actors, uh, uh, um, you know, Maggie Smith or Judi Dench, like, asking <laughs> things of them that they didn't know about at all. And they gave it to me. And uh, it was a wonderful and a transforming and a heart breakingly touching thing to do because I have a horrible fear that they've never picked up a, a, a copy of a Shakespeare play since, that they may never have thought of it again. But one of those boys, one of those boys had real astonishing talent. Uh, again, the cameraman said, my God, he, he really, when you, he started to do the Shakespeare, he, he, he changed and uh, uh, he, he became alive. And he said to me afterwards, you know, that's the most alive I've ever felt in my life. And I said, well, you know, Henry, um, I'm not going to suggest to you, I would never ever dream of suggesting to anybody that they should become an actor, because it's a mug's game, I can tell you. <laughs> but I said, you might enjoy acting. There are ways you can do that. You can join an amateur group, or you can do night classes, or you could do uh, weekend courses, or maybe you might like to go to a drama school, who knows? And he said, yeah, I'll think about that. And three times we got in touch with him, nothing. So he lost, he was the one who lost out. They lost out on the great natural resource that is William Shakespeare. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Oh.